podcasters. Podcasting Smarter is the official podcast from Podbean, featuring podcasting interviews, best practices, and helpful tips. We're here to give you the tools, resources, product updates, and news to help you get started podcasting and keep your podcast growing. Hello. Hello and welcome, everyone. We are so excited that you're here. To, this is our September live event for Storytelling Podcast Week, and we're joined by Rob Tinkler from Hero Complex. I'm going to read our brief intro in a second. Hi, Rob. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, we are so excited that you're joining us today. And Rob has really built up a kids podcast network. So for everybody out there who has kids, is looking at creating content for kids as a parent, this is the event for you. I'm going to read our brief intro and then we'll jump in. I'm just so excited to chat with you today, Rob. So welcome back, everyone, to Podbean Storytelling Podcast Week and our Podcasting Smarter Live series. This is our live event for September, Podcasts for Kids, Behind the Mic with creator Rob Tinkler of Hero Complex, featuring Rob, who's created podcasts for kids, such as Eight Tiny Reindeer and Imagination Meditation. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, Storytelling Podcast Week has live stream sessions like this one with top podcasters and storytellers from scripted fiction and nonfiction podcasts from across our world and our imaginations. We also have exclusive recorded episodes on Podbean's official podcast, Podcasting Smarter. Storytelling Podcast Week and our event here today is brought to you by Podbean. We're a podcast hosting and monetizing platform and home to over 640,000 podcasts. To start your podcast, head over to podbean.com today. And now we'll jump in. Hello, hello, Rob. How's it going? Hello. It's going real well. Oh, well, first off, I just want to start out with, I mean, the network that you've built and just kind of talking about your journey a little bit. So you have a few shows, A Tiny Reindeer, Imagination Meditation, which we'll talk about. We have clips, which we'll share. Um, And for everybody out there, you know, you're going to learn today what is important when you're thinking about making kids content, which I think is really cool. Um, How Rob got started, Rob's background a little bit, how to grow, you know, from one podcast to, you know, a real portfolio of different shows, Um, creativity and um, taking in listener feedback. There's going to be a lot we're talking about today. So Rob, you have a few shows, including A Tiny Reindeer and Imagination Mm -hmm. Meditation, but you also have Kids of the Future, Nightlight Zone, the nonsensical mm-hmm. show. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell us a little bit about your journey because you're also an Emmy winning TV writer. Um, Emmy nominated, nominated. Okay, sorry, Emmy nominated. <laughs> <laughs> Emmy nominated TV writer, exactly. So, um, you know, you have this TV background, you have this background of being already in the entertainment industry. So how did you come into podcasting and how did the idea of creating a network of kids podcasts begin for you? Well, I, I started out as an actor, and uh, the you know I, I've been you know working for years doing on camera stuff, and then I veered into voiceover, and I really found I really found a foothold there, and really felt at home. And I was like, oh my goodness, I can just wear pajamas to work. This is the best job ever. It doesn't matter what you look like; it just matter, matters how you sound. So, um, uh, w- when I was wor- I was actually working on camera. Uh, on a on a series on ABC called Notes from the Underbelly. And it was a very short-lived show, only went two seasons. It went a season longer than it perhaps should have. But uh, I had a, a supporting role. So I was in my trailer a lot, just hanging out. So I, I, in order to, you know, fight off boredom, I, I brought my laptop and I would start writing. And at the time, I was also doing some animated series and I felt comfortable enough with the producers of the series uh, to ask them, hey, do you mind if I do you mind if I write uh, an episode? And they went totally pale and like, oh, no, the actor wants to write. And they were like, sure, why don't you write a spec script? And a spec script is like a, it's a pro bono, a free script. You write a free script of the of the show you're on or any show, really. And so I, I submitted it and they really liked it. And they were like, hey, you want to write another one? Do you want to write another one? Do you want to write it? And it, so it sort of, I, I didn't come into it thinking I could write. I had just read as an actor, read so many scripts in my life that I just through osmosis got pretty good at it. So 
uh, cut to cut ahead many years. I no longer do on camera, um, but still still thriving in voiceover. But uh, uh, and then uh, podcasting um, uh, became you know came to be, and I was fascinated with it. And I realized after a while, I actually it's like the me- it's like my number one medium. I I, I listen to more podcasts than uh, I watch movies or TV shows or play video games. I love it. I, I I can listen to it to listen to it. I can listen to them to while I'm doing other things, while I'm mowing the lawn or at the gym or out for walks or walking the dog or pretending to look after my children. And uh, so I, I was like, I, I, I have to do something. I have to apply my skills of writing and acting and uh, bring something to this. So then um, I actually had written A Tiny Reindeer as a feature film an animated feature, sort of Pixar style animated feature film. And it's really hard to get stuff made. And and I'm super impatient. I was still pitching it around, but I was I was super impatient. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get my friends together and like, let's just do it. And we'll do it. Oh, as a podcast. Sure. Why not? And I'll do it, divide it into 24 different episodes and that will be like an advent calendar. And it'll be kind of cool that way. And And so it just sort of, I barfed it out if you can barf out of your hands, uh, <laughs> words, uh, in, inside of about a week. And it went, it went so well, the record went so well. And, but it was a finite thing because it was a beginning and end thing. It's not an ongoing series. And I was like, okay, I've got to do something else. I've got to do some continue with this. So I have a sketch comedy background. So I wanted to do, sketch comedy. So I started writing sketches with kids in mind because I, I'm a dad. Um, and then COVID happened and then I was trapped inside with my family for a really long time. And so then we created together as a little time passer, um, kids of the future. So the kids voices in that are my own kids and they really liked doing that. And I, it enabled me to sort of teach them about writing and the, they helped write it and the creative process. And, and now I have like a permanent, a record of their like little kid voices once they outgrow them and be come t- you know get older and <laughs> want to go their own way i'll still have their little voices in my head to listen to um and yeah so it, it just sort of like I, you know I, I kept like jumping from lily pad to lily pad moving continuously moving forward with ideas and and finding new shows that i could do continuously so sketch comedy like on non, on nonsensical show there's an infinite amount of sketches that you can do, although a little hiatus with that creatively with the people that I was collaborating with, but uh, fully plan on going back to that and then changed gears and went to uh, the Nightlight Zone, which is the anthology series, sort of like the Twilight Zone. Um, um, again, kid oriented, uh, not too scary, not very scary, but just scary enough to just sort of like give you the heebie-jeebies, not the nuts, something that'll give you nightmares. Right. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, but, and, but again, because it's an anthology series, you can kind of keep, I just keep thinking of scary things where my kid will go, oh, I'm afraid of like being alone in the bathtub. And I'm like, okay, there's something there. I'm going to write a story about that. So it's also a lot of like helping my own kids sort of cope with their, their own fears and, and things where they the challenges or things that they need to you know be courageous for and 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 <laughs> and also my own unrequited childhood uh stuff you know things that bothered me when i was a kid that i i'm like oh i gotta i gotta write something for this so it was sort of like acting writing podcasting and then podcasting is a totally addictive um and and i wanted to do something again dealing with children's anxieties and fears and stuff like that, that helped sort of quell worries and, and, um, you know, something that I could churn out pretty quickly and, you know, something that I know would, would, would help soothe my own kids. And so I did created imagination meditation as, uh, um, you know, light touch meditation. It's not deep. It's not too deep into the meditation world. We pick an animal at the beginning, and then based on that animal's characteristics, um, we find an in, a connective tissue a, 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 a intention yeah. to focus on. Yeah, absolutely. So in, in a more recent episode, it was like hummingbird um, finding, finding a flower and fo- just focusing on a flower 
Um, and in the way that, and that came with me looking at hummingbirds at my, co- at my cabin and watching these little floaty, beautiful hummingbirds just like glide, so accurately glide into the bird feeder. It was, you know, I was like, okay, I got to do something about this. So, um, yeah, ideas come from all sorts of different places. Um, it's almost hard to keep up with the ideas, uh, <laughs> that I can generate because I've gotten into that mode of creative output yeah there's times where i have input mode uh where i listen to podcasts and listen to uh, other art you know watch movies and i'm in input mode and then uh you get into output mode which is like that that creativity comes out um and you want to get that flow going so Anyway, I feel like I've talked a lot. No, no, I think it's really fantastic. Don't, no. Um, it's definitely something where, you know, I think in terms of how the shows are created, you know, people always want to know how the podcast is made, which we'll get into in a little bit. You know, you mm-hmm. talked a little bit about the ideation of it um, and the inspiration with your kids. And I think for everybody out there who has kids, it's something where, you know, you want to, you want them to have experiences where their anxieties are quelled or they feel like they're experiencing the wonder of the world. Right. And yeah. as a creator, mm-hmm. it's something that you can do with them. I also love yes. that you talked about how much you love podcasting. This is how we all get into podcasting, right? <laughs> yeah. You you totally. find a bunch of podcasts you love, you binge them, you talk to everyone mm-hmm. you know about podcasts until they're like, uh, you got to, could you just make one? And then you do. <laughs> and then you do. And, then and it's so do. easy. And it's so easy. Exactly. We talk about this all the time at Podbean. And we have so many resources on just getting that first, you know, getting your podcast out, starting your podcast, launching. Um, so we'll have some of those in the in the notes for today's event, along with your links, of course. And I want right. to share a little bit about Eight Tiny Reindeer. So right. this was your first podcast, right? And and like you said, it's like an advent calendar. And I want to play a clip of it. And then I want to talk about kind sure. of what the evolution of Eight Tiny Reindeer, because there's some really exciting sure. things happening with it. So it's it's out now. I have a oh! I have it. is that reversed? Is that reversed? It is reversed. Is this backwards? It's, How do we fix that? <laughs> How do we fix that? I'm not sure. I don't know. It's the same image as on the uh on the it uh, is. exactly the podcast. We're gonna play the yeah. clip in a second because spoiler alert, the podcast has been turned into a book, which is really cool. So we're gonna play a clip yep. and then Rob. You know, I think everybody out there is so curious about that journey of how do I get my podcast published as a book? It's it's something where I think for a lot of podcasters, it's a real dream. So we're going to play the mm-hmm. clips so you can get a feeling for the show. It's really beautiful. And, you know, as I think we're in September, so as we kind of move toward the holiday season, it's something where I always think those things are, you know, they remind you of like hot chocolate and mm-hmm. winter and totally. all that good stuff. So here is Eight yeah. Tiny Reindeer. <laughs> Santa got rid of his eight tiny reindeer and now delivers all his gifts with high-tech drones. But Larchmont Quickbuck, the evil guy who built all Santa's technology, decides to shut the whole operation down so he can take over Christmas. Too bad you released your eight tiny reindeer back into the wild. So I asked Santa what he needed. We need eight tiny reindeer. Uh, animal care wasn't in my job description. And then that evil dude Quickbuck hopefully won't do this. I'll stop Christmas if it's the Last thing I ever do. So that is a tiny reindeer. That's it's it. so cute. That's it. I recognize that voice. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's it, right? This is uh <laughs> you have to use what's around you. <laughs> I mean, really, yeah. that's what that's the the bootstrappy thing about podcasting is you can just use your own resources and your friends and all that sort of stuff but i mean yeah, it's I so cool uh, to like hear the voice and of course you're a voiceover artist so for everybody out right, there but then it's also like... i'm the bad guy too who's <laughs> talking you know and so it's like this and then i'm talking to myself you will yeah it's yeah that's a living but i think it's something out there where it's great to see that creativity you know i think it's something where you know you're thinking okay like Am I going to be able to do this? How does this sound? Does it sound professional enough? Can people tell it's me? Like, you know, I think I think a lot of podcasters have that fear, but you just kind of have to go for it, right? You can pivot later. You just you can modify later. 
Um, and mm-hmm. it, I think it really kind of is so fun because it takes, you know, the idea of Christmas and Santa and it really twists it right with with this yeah. new idea. Um, and, you know, it, that countdown as well, I think, is great for kids. Kids really love having something to look forward to as well, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. The chapters. Yeah, the chapters. It was, good, it, was a, it, it was a good thing to it worked with Christmas, obviously. But uh, yeah, and, and and little cliffhangers, and then of of course you create that bingey effect where people just want to like churn through it and get all the way through it um, to the end. But then it ends, and then that's so sad. But, but you you just got to create something else. Well, you could create a yeah. you could create another season for a different holiday season. It, uh, well, I, I have part two already part two. sort of formulated. Part, yeah, part two's two is coming, but, everybody, and other holidays. Although I will say it's hard. Holidays are great because. It, People have time off, like over Christmas, they're off and they're vegged out or, you know, they've eaten too much turkey. So it's good to, you know, you can pop on a a podcast. So it's good in that respect. But it's also difficult in that when it when I first put it out there, generating listeners, because you only have like a month to get them on board versus other podcasts, you know, serialized podcasts that you can just sort of build over time and build your audience. But just to go back to, does this sound good? How am I doing? That self-talk that a lot of creators, um, that stops them from doing that. You got to tell that voice to be quiet. Right. That's because an intrusive here's, here's, thought. That's not real. <laughs> it, is, it is. It's true. And I'm going to do a meditation <laughs> about that imagination meditation. No, but, but I think it's but, something where like, you know, for a lot of podcasters, podcasting is a, is a self-made medium in a lot of ways, right? You don't need approvals. You yep. don't need a network, but you're somebody no. who's gotten that already. Right? And believe me, I know what it's like to be staring across a, a, a desk or a Zoom meeting from very stone-faced executive who's not very happy with what you have put out and, and you have to defend what you've created for them and it's so much easier to look at yourself in the mirror the worst thing that's going to happen is like oh i i think i could do this better but but here's the thing to remember creators you're going to get better yes and oftentimes yes. people like to get on board and see hear you get better yeah and then they 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 like i i know i've followed podcasters it's like okay this is they're not very it's okay the content is there the the idea is there the personality is there some little thing that i can glom onto but then over time you're like oh they're getting really good at this and then they figure out the format and you're like oh this is really good yeah so even even you know, like some of the most successful podcasts, they start out, they're like, you listen to back to those first few seasons, it's like a little rusty. But then if for the your listeners uh, that have stuck with you, they're like, no, I was with them from the beginning. You know, no, and no, I, think, I, I think it's important to remember people want to be part of your story. They want to yes. be part of your journey. Right. They yeah. want super fans want to say, oh, I, you know, I was part of this movement. I was part of this podcast. I was part of this community. Mm-hmm. before everybody um, else right and and, and they 100%. and they want that ownership in a way so i i think it's okay to to let them have that you know i think it's okay to come in authentic and where you are right whether that's yeah. you know coming from a professional career whether that's loving podcasts because i mean you know we all come into podcasting like okay <laughs> you know <laughs> we've listened yeah. to 24 hours of podcasting in the last 24 hours <laughs> so, mm-hmm. <laughs> that mm-hmm. kind of thing um, and mm-hmm. in terms of also the production of your show, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, obviously you have multiple podcasts, but in terms of, right. you know, you have the idea and you're a writer. So are you working with a, with a tight script? Are you working with ideas? Are you working with bullet points? Um, I, tell us about the, the, the journey from the idea to, you know, the, the record, the, the maybe script recording, mm-hmm. editing, and then that finished product and, and launch. Sure. Yeah. The process, the process. the process. Okay. So you're in line at the grocery store or you're sitting at a movie or you're at the mall or you're in your car stuck in traffic and you get this little notion, this idea that occurs to you. And you're like, that's, that'd be Man, I wish there was a podcast that that or that, or a movie or whatever, whatever it is that you create or a book or whatever. You're like, I wish they had something like that. And then you forget about it. Yeah. And then it comes back and you're like yeah. in the tub or something. Right. And you're like, oh, there's that idea. There's that thought again. There's that idea. That's telling you you should probably you should probably write like start by writing it down. 
I call them flashbulbs. They're little, that's not a proper term. That's just what I call them. But it's like, you get this little. It's like, an idea. It's, it's a little, a little bit yeah. of creative inspiration. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And and sometimes I do also want to just say, sometimes we get these ideas of, hey, this should exist. And I believe sometimes we get those ideas because we should create the, the things. Yes. It is the thing that it's like, it's being a creative person. The, yeah. You know, so the, the Greeks called them the muses. Yep. Um, you know, some inspiration, something. And if you want it, you should make it because yes. y there's more more people out there like you who would appreciate your the niche thing that you want to create. Like, you know, I didn't set out to create a Christmas podcast. I, it was a, an idea that I had initially, um, a little rhyme that I had made for my kids for Christmas that was like, there's like a book or something that's been around for years. It's like 10 little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and broke his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So then I wrote a Christmas one for Christmas, like as a little Christmas present, like eight tiny reindeer playing inside Santa's bound, uh, Dasher dashed too fast and broke his antlers. <laughs> and, and 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 Santa called the elves. And it's like, it was like that. So yeah. each each reindeer had a different, based on their personality, their name, right? their personality. And I was like, huh, there's more to this. There's more to this. And so then I was like, well, you, okay. So what if tiny reindeer is a very specific species of reindeer and they're super mischievous? mischievous and what if Santa let them all go? What if he let them go into the wild and why would he do that? Oh, right. He, uh, how about he uh, technology? He, he now delivers gifts with drones. He doesn't need reindeer anymore. So he sets them out into the wild, but the tech baron that, <laughs> that supplied him with a, the drone technology to do that has decided he's going to take over because he's running it anyway. And Santa's like, oh no, now I got to find the eight tiny reindeer. So he, so he chooses his two favorite elves. And ask them to please find the missing eight tiny reindeer. So now it's an adventure. So it starts in these little, some often little silly places. And then it starts rolling. And then you have, you know, backstory. And now I'm writing for these elves. And I'm like, okay, I got to make the elves kind of this buddy cop duo who are totally, don't really get along. And one's like, like a millennial elf who's like, you know, really relying on technology. And then this old school elf who's like, wants to be a ball, or he was a ballologist and just wants to go back to making balls. <laughs> you know, bowling, volley, soft foot, all those balls need to get made, not by machines, but by hands. And so they, they're they also at a crux. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like it's just, you know, the more you think about it, the more you sort of play with it in your head, it just starts going. And then I do voices and then I start like talking as the characters and what would the villain sound like? And he starts, you know, and 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 then you you just, you know what? As adults, we forget what it's like to be playful. You yeah. know, I see my kids all the time. They have no problem throwing on a voice for their friends. They're talking, they're telling a story. They're like, my teacher sounds like this. And I love it. And, yeah. it, you know, but then I, I tap into that kidness of like that playfulness, like be playful, let yourself be playful. I am alone in my little studio space. So it's like, not like anyone can hear. It's like a little closet. And <laughs> it's just me and my mic. And I just forget about the world around me and I just go. So, but I, I do write those flash bulbs down. I make notes of them. And then I slowly build on top of them by adding points. Like yeah. the way I described a tiny rain, the plot of a tiny reindeer, you add a point. Oh, the reindeer are let go. Oh, and I just <clears throat> make a list. And mm -hmm. then when I have a big enough enough beats, then I try to form that clay into a bigger into a story. And I do like a beat outline and then figure out what the three acts are, which is like, you know, not to turn this into film school, but what you know, what is the, you know, the 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 natural form of storytelling? Three acts, a beginning, a middle, and end. And if you think that's really complicated, I will tell you this, a knock, knock joke has three acts. It's a three act story. Knock, knock, who's there? Ooh, act two, interrupting cow, interrupting cow, moo. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> if you think of it just small, like a, like a knock, knock joke, not even big, just start small. Don't even worry about writing a whole big epic. Just uh, 
get your ideas out there because the world needs to hear it because you have a point of view. And podcasting is a great way to express that point of view. So you kind of write the beats out. Sorry, I just want to yeah. I just want to share a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And then from there, do you do you kind of do you build out the script a little bit or do you keep it? Yep. Okay. Because I mean, you're Build a writer, script, so I'm guessing that it's pretty dialogue, tight. Okay. <laughs> write dialogue, okay. write scenes. Um, and then, um, yeah, like, I mean, but I don't want to limit people. Like I follow, because I'm a screenwriter, I follow t- TV format, mm-hmm. sort of the, t- the, uh, what the shows I was working on, uh, were, um, they sort of were like, if you've, if you've heard of SpongeBob, there were, it was a 22, a half hour show, but with commercials as 22 minutes divided into two because there were two adventures. There's always two adventures per episode. So 11 minutes. So a, a lot of my podcast episodes tend to be like between nine and 11 minutes just yeah. because I follow that format. But also I think um, for kids, it's it's nice to have something short that's entertaining. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I, yeah. it's and something that's... where it doesn't have to, you know, they don't, ha- they don't have a chance to get bored of it really. Yes. You are reading my mail. You understand, <laughs> you understand. You, you want to be yeah. able to hold on to the kids. Like if, if you, you know, I, I think I, I, I do enjoy long form podcasts and like the radio drama style where somebody does like a half hour, or an hour. I'm like, wow, this is incredible. Yeah. But it's for especially in the kids space, it's really hard for them to sort of stay with it for that long before they start sort of drifting off. Mm -hmm. So even if you do that, just to give sort of like natural breaks to the storytelling, um, just to sort of um, to hold your audience. But coming up in the kids thing, you have to I always try to put a couple of things in. There should always be it should be relatable. Some some aspect of your um story kids can understand they know it through and through they they know this feeling something they experience at school um at home uh, with their families um with you know with their siblings some conflict something um so in to bring in another podcast i do nonsensical show which is a sketch show which is you know short form every sketch is about three or four minutes but like take for example um uh, uh, I think if we're in here, if we're, I got to remember what it's called. Super, super, super family, super family. It's one of the early, uh, I wish I knew the name of that particular sketch. We've done mm-hmm. so many of them, but it's basically a family with superpowers and a parent who comes in and is like begging their kids to do their chores. And they're like, you have the power of flight. You could fly up to the chandelier and take away those cobwebs, but you won't. And they're like, Dad, sorry, I got to do something. So the relatable thing there is the the parents nagging the, the kid to do their chores and the kid sort of shutting them down, which is another aspect of what I like to convey, which is wish fulfillment. Mm. I want to give the kids something that they could, they'd love to do. So in the super family thing, they have superpowers. Um, and being that... Uh, podcasting is listening is audio only you 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 can have a Steven Spielberg budget you know James Cameron avatar budget uh, things happen but because it's only audio and you're just using sound effects Mm -hmm. um, it stays totally cost effective (laughs) I often will make my own sound effects Um, I I will do my own it's called foley you know like i will do my flipping through the pages and slamming the book that's it like you know uh, it's off you can find those things but it's often easier just to make them yourself to make them yourself um, you, yeah, you hold it absolutely. close enough to the mic and so it really becomes uh so immersive there's so much you know and it is time it, it can be time consuming but it doesn't mm-hmm. have to be um but I love that I have that whole, like that whole holistic, the control of every aspect of it and the story, the characters, the, the performance, the sound effects. And it's just super satisfying. It's more satisfying than anything that I've ever done. Yeah, absolutely. On. And I mean, it's something where the creativity is endless, right? So y- yeah. you kind of have mm-hmm. this like explosive creativity. You have the idea, you have the character development, you're kind of doing voices, you, you know, you mm-hmm. create bullet points, you create a script, you're recording it and you, you know, you either, and it's very easy out there to find a lot of these sounds. There's 
you know, libraries out there you can purchase mm-hmm. or license, or there's sometimes free effects you can find online. You know, don't limit mm-hmm. yourself. You can create them yourself, like you're saying, Rob. But also, you know, from there, what what is your editing process like? So now I've 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 roped in my friends. I've recorded yeah. my own voice. <laughs> we actually will record using like uh, you know remotely. Everybody's got their own. I, I actually yeah. prefer if everybody records at home because they I just say choose a quiet room, get a good mic, let's check it. They they usually blend pretty well, and we do the old. Uh, we all press record at the same time. Do three, two, one. Just like make a clapper, yeah. like the the old movie <laughs> style clapper, just so that we have an edit point. Because you see in the editing software, in the waveform, you see a big spike. That's right. Like, that, if, that's a really good trick, actually. Yeah. If you're editing yeah. and you know, okay, hey, everybody, we need to make a cut. If you just do a big clap, it'll show up in the sound wave and you can start to identify it. So, you know, oh, okay, let me just go to that sound wave. You can visually spot it and it's so much easier to yes. edit for sure. It makes it so much easier to, even when I'm doing auditions for stuff, if I mess up, I will like, I'll clap (laughs) because I'll see where I messed up and I'll know, look, scan. I can quickly scan. I don't have to listen to the whole thing. Where did I mess up? I can just look at the waveform and quickly drag, you know, it to the right point, make the cut and keep going. Um, Yeah, that's actually useful little trick. And I just use like my, the recording software that came with my computer. And I mean, I have a good mic. Now I have a good mic. Um, but I have people on my podcast that use the built-in mics on their computers yeah. or their phones yeah. and it works, it works, it we works find great. a way to make yeah. it work. Yeah. What kind of mic mm-hmm. do you have? It is a, a U87, a Neumann U87. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's been around, this mic is very storied. It, if you look at like old documentaries of like, it's been around since like the 60s but old documentaries of like the Beatles or like Rolling Stones recording. And I'm like, there's my mic. (laughs) They have not changed it since then. Um, Even though I bought it recently, but it's like so perfect that they just are like, this is perfect. Let's not change it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So from there, you know, I I think that's really an important aspect to remember, right? Use what you have. If you, you know, don't feel like you have to go out and purchase editing software or the best mic out there, start with what you have, use what you have. Mm-hmm. I think that's such an important yep. thing to remember. And as you continue your podcast gr- journey, you're going to, you're going to learn more stuff. You're going to grow, you're, you're going to up your gear. You may up your editing software. You may start using, you know, lots of different tools. We talk about tools all the time here at Podbean, but don't be intimidated by that. Don't mm-hmm. let that stop you or slow you down. I think that's a really important yeah. aspect as well. So from there, you've kind of got you know, you've got the the raw, you know, voice on tape. You're editing with, like you said, the editing software that came with your computer, which is pretty great. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm guessing, do you have like a Mac? Is that? Uh, yep. Okay. Yep, so that's it. So I, it's like GarageBand. I do everything on GarageBand. Right. Yep. Done. Everything. And I, and I have, you know, it's so funny because uh, another company came to me and they, they had an existing show, like an on-camera show yeah. that they wanted to develop as a podcast just because they wanted to ride that wave of it and hit that other level and they were like okay so send us the pro tools stems and blah 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 blah. and i'm like i I don't use pro tools like (laughs) what software do you use i'm like garage band in my basement (laughs) and they were like okay we'll work with whatever you got yeah but but the 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 funny thing is is a lot of people will stop themselves. They're like, oh, my setup isn't good enough. I'm uh, not probably professional enough. But, but the thing is, you have to start somewhere, right? You. Have- I record it's all of my morning. stuff. I'm working on, I mean, I'm on the Snoopy show, which is on Apple TV. I'm on My Little Pony, which is on Netflix. All recorded on my Mac in my basement with a good mic, but nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. No, and that's that is really, broadcast quality. That's a really important aspect to remember. I think it's something where, yeah. you know, once you have that input the, where you want it, it's okay to to be flexible on some of that software. And, you know, everybody's going to have a different balance, right? Use whatever mm. whatever is the best mic you can get. And sometimes that's the mic yes. built into your computer. Sometimes that's, you know... Uh, a mic made for podcasting. Maybe that's a broadcast broadcasting recording mic. It's, you know, it's going to be different for everybody, but don't let that hold you back. Don't let that stop mm-hmm. you. I think that's a really important aspect. So from there you're editing. And then obviously, you know, you're putting together seasons and different episodes of the shows. So I want to mm-hmm. talk next a little bit about, 
imagination meditation, which I love. Sure. I think it's just such a beautiful show. Um, before well, we get into the show, because I, I do want to share it. Actually, let's do that first. Let's share the show so everybody sure. can kind of get a little bit of a listen. We're just going to share a short clip of it, and then we'll we'll kind of dive deep on on that show as well. Sure. This meditation is a hummingbird, and we are going to focus ourselves as we approach a task with this. Let's start our day by taking a deep breath in and letting a big breath out. And as you continue to slowly breathe, I want you to use your beak to sniff out the perfect flower for you. Always try to focus first to determine your goal, and then you can go for it. Hey, you it's chose the hummingbird. So That's great. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's something where, you know, just being able to bring your attention in, right? And mm -hmm. just say, okay, we're going to have an immersive experience and it's going to take you somewhere and you're just going to be able to bring your presence and your energy somewhere different. I think that's, you know, first of all, what meditation does. But second of all, I think it's for kids, it's something where it's like, okay, whatever else is going on, you can just let that go for now. And I think that yeah. that's a really beautiful maybe aspect of the of the podcast as well. It's it's such a cool show, and I think it's something where, you know, for kids, there's there's, you know, there's it's different. That mindfulness looks different, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be, you know, convoluted, and and kids have different attention spans than adults, right? right. And so just bringing in the immersive sounds and you know, directing your attention to something is, is really beautiful. Um, and it's such a, the animal is the animal. It helps them focus. They can picture exactly. it. It's hard for them to go picture nothing. It's right. like, well, right. that's very hard for observe kids your to do. thoughts. Right? <laughs> if you have a notion, if you have a thought, push it away. <laughs> and I get it. And I see the value in that. And I even use that. <laughs> yeah, we that all do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they push it away. But I'd rather go, no, put this in your head instead of your own thought. Put this, put a bird in your head. Yeah. Imagine they can picture it. And then it's a little more interesting and they're engaged. And, you know, the funny thing with kids is like they, you know, they peek, they close their eyes. I, I, I don't even, I, I say you can close your eyes or just gaze downward. Like you, you, I don't make it strict. I tell them breathe. But they don't have to breathe. Like I say, don't please breathe when you feel comfortable. That was my my spouse's recommendation she's like why don't you just tell them to breathe when they feel comfortable i'm like that is brilliant because otherwise you know i take a big adult breath in and then a breath out and they're like they're turning purple because they can't bring in that much air while they wait for me to breathe out so i'm like just breathe in and out but uh keep that simple and then they can and then i use the the atmosphere the environmental sounds of like water running or leaves in the trees or something like that so that they know they're still in it cuz oftentimes if there's too much silence people are like is this still even on a regular podcast right is it still like on is it still playing in an right. interview where an actor's asked a question is a pause i'm like did i oh my god did i hit the button did i hit stop what happened oh no they're talking again so silence with audio is like it's not such a good thing. So it this can be, but I think for kids, it's important to make sure that 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 experience keeps them engaged. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Kids yeah. just have a different attention span. And for how did you come up with the idea for imagination meditation? Oh, huh, that's it's really so interesting. cool. It's such a great show. I think it was originally I had conceived of it as you know zoo zoo meditation or something like that and then i was like no but you're trapped in a zoo you're trapped in a zoo and i we should probably put it in nature and then i was like but and then i might not stay only with animals there might be some evolution uh, because i worked on um another show a pbs show called cat in the hat knows a lot about that and they did like a bunch of animals every episode they did animals and then they ran out of animals like i mean this was this, this series went on forever so they're <laughs> like okay what do we do what do we do what do we do Let's go to clouds. And so they're like, all right, let's, let's come up with some talking clouds. So I was like, that's a genius way. So I, if, if you think long term, <laughs> and I do because of the industry that I'm in, I think mm -hmm. down the road, what if this goes for 10 years? I don't want to run out of animals. I'm like, okay, uh, did I do woodpecker already? Uh, geez, okay, what else do I got? Um, I'd rather, you know, let, 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 maybe I move to environments or maybe I move to organic. I have no idea. I don't know. Who knows where I'll end up? 
maybe it'll be completely imaginary. And so I was like, I'll just imagine, let's just use the, that part of our, let's use our imaginations. Uh, what is the imagination meditation? Exactly. And you know, what, what's some of the feedback you've received from kids or mm. families, parents, um, in, yeah, no, like, and, and that, that feedback is great because, and it also keeps me really engaged. It keeps me engaged. If I know people are listening, if they, even if they say in the comments on the Podbean app, they're like, yo, that's great. I'm, I'm on cloud nine because I know I see the numbers and I see a lot of people listen, but I also just that engagement just makes me go, Oh, somebody felt compelled to say something. And yeah. I, some people write letters and which is really sweet. Um, I ha there was one uh, kid that was uh, at the beginning of uh, the summer that was going to be going away to camp and they were scared to go and be left. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to write one. I'm going to write one for this kid. Oh. Um, and so it, it enables me to, to do stuff like that. And just knowing that it's helping people is just, it's so rewarding and, and is a real driving force. That feedback is, is huge. But also if people make suggestions and then you make them happen, people are very happy, very happy. They, they love to hear their ideas come to life. This is a really important aspect of podcasting, right? Like, first of all, engage with your audience. Yes, mm -hmm. like we we talk to we talk to creators about this all the time, you know. And an aspect that's really important in terms of having a successful podcast is creating that experience for your podcaster. It's not a one way street; it is a two way street. If you're podcasting, mm -hmm. your listener is actively listening, right? It's something where, yeah. You know, it is a two-way relationship and they're communicating mm -hmm. with you through their through their downloads and their listenership, right? That speaks volumes, doesn't it? Yep. Um, yeah. And I then, mean, you can pose questions. Yeah. It helps if you pose questions. Yes. I mean, I try to at the end of every episode say, it, it hit me like hit me with some ideas. Like we yes. get our ideas from you it's, it's so that they do. I, and I love the film. Like fi I listen to film podcasts them in and that. they suggest. Yeah. Yeah. They're like people, they talk about their movies that they want, but they ask people, what do you want to hear? And when you, I don't know, it just feels more engaging if, if they're like somebody mailed in this idea for this movie and I'm like, okay, I got to hear it. Now I got to hear their take on it. It's not something that they have been ruminating about for years and it's their favorite movie. And these are all the reasons why now they're, they're taking somebody else's idea and sort of riffing on it. So it feels more authentic. It feels more engaging. It's, it's much more interesting to listen to for me anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And I think also from a listener perspective, right? If you write into your favorite show and what I love also about Hero Complex and Imagination Meditation is that you have on your Podbean page, hey, if you have an idea for an episode, here's our email, right? Like mm -hmm. send us an email, get in contact. I think it's it's great that you are open to having that conversation with your audiences and then, you know, letting them be part of that experience. And of course, as a listener, like if you submit an idea and that gets made into an episode, that's the coolest, especially if you're yeah. a kid. That means mm -hmm. so much to you. You know, I think it's it's really, it, you know, it, it not only is amazing, you know, that that your episode is made, but also it it helps bring you into the experience on another level. It's really ownership from the audience side as well, which is mm -hmm. so important. Really, really important. Yeah, no. It's, 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 and it works. You put an email, people respond. People go, yeah. oh, oh, I can write to them. Yeah. Oh, I can talk to them. It's a real oh, human. Yeah. It's a real human there yeah. who wants to hear from you. And there's not, you know, I think like, you know, with social media, which is great, you get s feedback, but people are like, they'll throw things out. Like they're like, oh, whatever. And you might, you know, some trolley thing. Yeah. But there's no, but with an email, they're like, no, like I'm going <laughs> to, it, it tends to be g genuine people seeking um, seeking uh, to improve the show or or tell you what what they love about it and what they'd like to see more of. Yeah, of course, and that's the thing about email, right? It's it's safe in a way where if something doesn't feel right, you can just delete it. Or yeah, yeah it's just it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, don't respond to those people. Don't even you feel they'll say something. They'll t you know, and you're just like, no. Yeah, I think, go I have think your go have your 
bathroom somewhere else. Yeah. And I think that's Not part of, of being open, right? It's something where, you yeah. know, to give everybody that access to submit their ideas and their feedback. And in terms of the feedback that you've heard, you know, obviously from kids, that kid writing that letter about going to camp. Amazing. I, I mean, what's some of the parent feedback you've heard? Uh, just uh, we fall asleep, you know, fall asleep. we're the bedtime ritual. We do the meditations oh. and uh, listen to them and get ready for bed. And it helps us chill out. And, you know, you you are now a part of our family ritual, which is just like, oh, my God, That's now lovely. I feel like a part of that. Yeah, so lovely. Just really positive. Uh, you've helped my kid, you know, some uh, a parent with a child with Tourette's. Uh, just, it, it, it helped the kids just sort of disengage and stop mm -hmm. thinking so mm -hmm. much or worrying and just like, just beautiful things like that, where I just genuinely feel like I'm helping. Wow. Yeah. I was going to ask, you know, in terms of, like you said, with routine and, you know, having the podcast be part of your listeners' everyday lives, which in, you know, in, in the case of Hero Complex and all your shows, Imagination Meditation is kids' lives, parents' lives. You know, you know, how have you seen kids podcasting play a role in children's development, right? In terms mm. of being able to learn to calm down or to focus. Yeah. And there's actually in my industry, uh, in the entertainment industry, there's a lot now they fully recognize that this is an important um, opportunity for kids to have some screen free time screen free is also what i was going to say it's like yeah. it's something for kids that's enriching but it's also and re relaxing has has benefits yes. but it's, they're not looking at a screen yeah they're not looking at a screen they're not drawn they're not focused but it's still you know like music like plus like playing music you know but it's yeah. uh it's content um and if you yeah, they, they, I've been to, uh, you know, a number of conventions where where they bring in experts who talk about it. And the um, the th I think the consistent thing with making good podcasts for kids is to really just put the kids idea first. Put center the, kid, the think kids. Of it. Yeah, totally. Center the kid. Don't go, oh, I'm going to teach this kid this. Kids are disrespectful. I got to teach them to be, you're going to lose. They're not going to listen to that. No. But if you find the, the thing that they are, uh, you know, it, that they're, they're worried about or, or that they laugh at something that like, if you have kids, watch what they laugh at and meet them where they are, meet them where they are. Don't try to teach, just try to entertain with medicine that tastes really funny <laughs> <laughs> it helps if it's a little funny it helps if it's a bit silly it helps if if, if you feel silly doing it chances are you're in the zone parents <laughs> you're in the zone <laughs> <laughs> you're in the zone where they're going what i uh, yeah amazing and you know kids, kids like the office i've heard they like the office because that awkwardness of like the the office environment and how awkward that they, they live that every day looking <laughs> at parents communicating they live if you think about it, kids are living with giants that tell them what to do what to wear what to eat what they shouldn't do what they should do and just yeah. how difficult i mean that's when i started nonsensical like that was the thing like i i'll make fun of your parents for you because i know you can't so let's have a laugh but also writing in that instance, I I wrote for the parents too. I was like, mm -hmm. I have to make the parents laugh because mm -hmm. oftentimes you're sitting in the car and you're listening, and the kids are like, "Play it out." So you want them to, you, you want everyone to enjoy it. You don't want to just be like, "Okay, we're just going to pick on parents." Um, <laughs> I always try to find some relatable thing. Um, of course, that everyone, everything. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And I think that kind mm -hmm. of goes into what I want to ask you next. What are the sure. lessons or values that you impart through? Hero complex imagination meditation nonsensical and, and your shows for kids. Oh man, that is a tough question. That's a great question, but that is really hard. I don't even know. I, say, I, mean, I you know, listening I, to the listening to the shows, I would say that it's you know, like the sense of whimsy and fun in a way. Sure. Yes, whimsy, fun, playfulness, 
but in a, like silliness. a safe, like in a safe way. Safe. Yeah. Safe and curated. I mean, really, I've tried, I've spent a lot of time working to build parental trust in the way that as a parent, I would want my, my, to offer my, I don't trust anybody, <laughs> especially like even, you know, my kids, they, they turn on YouTube and I'm, I make them watch it on the TV uh, so that I can see what they're watching. I won't let them go off with their tablets and watch it. Cause I'm just like, I don't know what they're absorbing and they're yeah. one click away from. So, so I do yeah. enjoy curated content. Um, the, the safety of that, like uh, thinking back to like channels like Nickelodeon, where the worst thing the kid was going to see was a commercial. Um, so, you know, I sort of follow that, like that mandate, I guess. Um, uh, equal parts, you know, with the comedy, equal parts, heart, hearts and farts. (laughs) Um, I think that that's the blend, right? Hearts and farts. I try to like funny, but the heart, where's, where's the heart, you know, even like, um, JJ Abrams, director, writer, extraordinaire, hugely successful producer. I heard him in an interview, it was probably on a podcast, um, saying <clears throat> the thing that, <clears throat> excuse me, the thing that people don't spend enough time doing when with what they're writing or what they're creating is like, where's the heart? Mm-hmm. Where's the heart? And often it's like, nah, that's the cheat. That's the cheesiness. That's the, that's the, that's gross. I don't want it. I just want it to be cool. I just want it to be, you know, awesome, fun or funny or hilarious. I want this to be hilarious. It doesn't need to be heart with hilarious. And believe me, if there's heart there, then it's way funnier. If I start with the heart, I start with the connection thing, the thing that they can relate to, the, the fear, the 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 relationship stuff. And then if you have that relatable thing, there will be a million funny ideas. But if you try to start with the joke, oh, a guy walks in and he forgets his wears, forgets to wear his pants to school. Uh, it's like, okay, yeah, yeah, there's your joke. But then you're just telling the same joke over and like, how do you spend the rest of the time in that sketch or that scene? Like it's, it's a, like kind of a one, you, you're setting yourself up for like to be a one trick, po- like one trick pony kind of thing, one joke scene or one joke sketch or one joke thing. But if you start with that relatable thing, there's a million jokes and, and uh, as a parent, you've been through it. So <laughs> especially if you draw on your own experience, you're like, oh my gosh, this is, <laughs> this is so funny. Um, but that, that, you know, it's so funny. But it, I mean, we're talking about so many different po- like podcasts, like, you know, imagination meditation is very different. It's, you know, it, it, what I kind of tapped into there was, like, you know, yeah, the relatable thing and to get kids to chill out, but also the sort of although I don't really have an ASMR mic, but I try to make it a little bit like that because my kids were watching that on YouTube and they were really digging the ASMR stuff. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to turn, I'll turn my gain up really high and then I'll get in and maybe get a little bit of mouth noise. (laughs) And then you really hear my breath and maybe my nose whistle. And then, you know what I mean? (laughs) And and, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to use that a little bit. Um, not too much because yeah. it's not about that, but just as an aesthetic. Yeah. And that's something that I add to it that doesn't cost me anything else. Yeah. I don't have to even put on a f- special filter that I got to buy to connect to my software. Like it's yeah, a lot of this stuff is just yeah. like, um, yeah. No, I mean, I, I think it's 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 really interesting. And we don't have a lot of time left, but I want to, before we go, I do want to ask you, because Eight Tiny Reindeer has been turned into a book. So yes. first off, do you mind just giving us like the cliff notes of what that process was like? And then yes. tell us a little bit about some like exciting stuff you have coming out, what we can look forward to from Hero Complex. And obviously we have all your links here in the in the notes for today's event um, in the description. So if you want to connect with Rob, submit episode ideas, all that good stuff. Yes. Be here in the, in yes. The Please do submit ideas because I love them. I love them so much. So it's so good. helpful. Um, yeah, no, Eight Tiny Reindeer, uh, the process of, okay. So, uh, it, it, you know, it's so funny. Uh, a, a, a podcast can also be an incredible idea incubator. You can start in one place and end up somewhere totally different as was the case with with a tiny reindeer i didn't set out to make a graphic novel a full color graphic novel um so exciting but but because it's it's a sound thing i didn't even think in terms of images i was just thinking oh what would sound good 
drones, drones delivering the gifts. That'll <laughs> that'll be a good sound effect. I wrote yeah. I wrote with the drones in mind. Um, you know, so uh, when when uh, the publishing company Kids Can Press came across it, they were like, "This is uh, this is cool," and they didn't say book. They published books. But they're like, maybe a graphic novel. And I was like, oh my God, I love graphic novel. I love comic books. I love those things. Uh, but the the transition, the script was pretty similar. The a a podcast script or a film script, very similar to mm-hmm. graphic novel. So it actually translated really well in terms of I basically handed them the script. Uh, and they were like, oh, this'll work. And then I just went in and added uh, descriptives of what uh, what would happen in each panel of each comic uh, using the sound. And I, I had to change it minimally, but I was sh- I was shocked at how well it worked. Yeah. Um, how did they say they found the show? Uh, through through network, like through a lot of like so Kids Camp Press is owned by a company called Chorus Entertainment. I work for Chorus a lot. I do voices on a lot of their shows. Mm-hmm. And and I think it was like a word of mouth thing. It just got around. Look what Tinkler's up to. Uh, <laughs> and I was sort of, you know, asking around and, you know, like o- always sort of like, you know, what are people working on? What are people writing? Yeah. And I, I touched base with the uh, with uh, the editor and they were like, so what is this? And then I I told them what it was. and. It was funny because the podcast was done and then they went to, it was going to be the Christmas, it were, uh, they were going to Turkey on a holiday and they were like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a listen over the holiday. Well, their family listened to the whole thing on the flight over to Turkey <laughs> and I think their kids loved it and they were like, they came back, they're like, we're going to do this. So it was like one of these things that it was sort of through it's who you know, but it's not. It's it's what you do. Yeah. Nobody would have if I didn't make it. Nobody would have found it. Yeah, so if absolutely. you have an idea, that's all the more reason. If you have an idea for a podcast, you you should just make it and put it out there. Put it out into the world because nobody will find an idea in your head. Yeah, but they might find something that you've created. I don't oh, like. I the, love that. <clears throat> no, that's so true. No one will ever discover an idea that lives exclusively in yeah. your head. Yes, <laughs> in your head. No, no, you got to share it with the world. You've got to um, share it with the world. And I think it's something where I hate those stories. Though those... you can't be shy. Yeah. To like you know, use what you have. And so many people are really nervous or shy about sharing their creative projects with their network or with people they know because they don't want to be seen in a different light or the vulnerability aspect. But that's how you get things ahead, and it's okay. It's true. And you know what? It's okay to be shy. I I know improvisers, very funny people who are so shy, soft-spoken people. Yeah. And then they get on stage and they click on. And maybe that's you in front of a mic alone in your little closet. Yeah. And that's good. And you should share that with people and you don't have to be there to share. Right. You know, it's like the beauty of it. I you don't, don't have to be on have to be stage. Present. Yeah, I exactly. don't have to be present with an audience, a thousand eyes staring at me while I do this, making me self-conscious. I can be the person I want to be or do or play a character I want to truly want to play mm. and have fun with it and just not have to witness the audience. But still, you know, when, once you put it out, then you get the feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. Uh, anything else upcoming from Hero Complex that we oh should gosh. get excited about? Uh, I know. Oh my gosh! I honestly, the I book have is pretty cool. A, a, a note in my in my in my phone. It's out now, by the way. It's available on Amazon. Great. We'll have we'll have the link here for everybody in the description of today's. Yeah. And I, I have I, I got to okay. summon up my podcast ideas. <laughs> I have a game show. I have. Uh, hold on. I I have so many, so many ideas, and some I'm like, eh, but I don't. I write them down. I don't. I don't edit. I don't go. Eh, I'm not writing that one down. Write I everything. Write down. I love this. I think that that's really because, important. It's really really everything, important. Everything, everything evolves. Like everything, like everything an, evolves. Like a news showgram. I have a an idea for like a a docu series about like nerds. <laughs> I have, uh, you know, I have um. Like old characters that I that I that I I did before that I no longer 
uh, that on shows that are no longer exist. I'm like, I want to bring those back. So mm. I want to do like a new series, like a podcast style sort of series. I want to do a murder mystery. Although there's a lot of those out in the world. Only murders in the building, which is about a podcast, right? Like what? Like it's it's <laughs> very really meta. It's very meta. Well, Rob, it's just yeah. been such a pleasure to chat with you today. Oh my gosh, I think there's so much here for all of our podcasters out there. Um, and I think. You know, for everybody out there who wants to make kids podcasts, I hope that you got a lot from our conversation today. Obviously, our email is podcasting smarter at podbean.com. We'll have that here in the description. Rob, we've got your links as well. So for people who want to submit any ideas for episodes or reach out to you, um, you know, and congratulations on the book. I think it's huge. Thank you. Um, and a real milestone for so many podcasters out there. We're so lucky mm -hmm. that you've joined us today. I'm going to read our brief outro. And then we'll wrap up. Oh, it's just been such a pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this live stream of Podbean Storytelling Podcast Week and Podcasting Smarter Live series for our live event in September. Podcasts for kids. Behind the mic with creator Rob Tinkler of Hero Complex, featuring Rob of Hero Complex, who's created podcasts for kids such as A Tiny Reindeer and Imagination Meditation. For those of you who may be joining us for the first time, Storytelling Podcast Week has live stream sessions like this one with top podcasters and storytellers from scripted fiction and nonfiction podcasts from across our world and our imaginations. We also have exclusive recorded episodes on the Podcasting Smarter podcast. And if you join late or want to have another listen to this incredible event, you can replay today's event on Podbean's YouTube channel. Storytelling Podcast Week and today's event are brought to you by Podbean. We're a podcast hosting and monetizing platform and home to over 640,000 podcasts. To start your podcast, head over to podbean.com today. Thank you for joining us and stay tuned for our upcoming events. We've got the link here to register and it's just been such a pleasure. Thank you so much, Rob. Yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.